welcome yet once again on our Wednesday Inside Bite session. I'm delighted to see you all here this morning. Our topic this morning is all about no limitations and working with diverse groups. Suzanne, I'm going to let you take over from this moment because it, this is going to be led by Suzanne, who has experience with working with this group. And um, I do too. Uh, not in the recent moments um, or the recent couple of years, but it's been certainly a rewarding experience when I have. So we're very happy to share what we know and get, get some ideas from you, uh, lovely ladies as well, uh, your thoughts about working with groups like this. So I'm going to hand over to you, Suzanne. Thank you, Evelyn. And I'm happy for everyone to unmute so that you can just join in the discussion because Evelyn and I had a talk about this and what was the best way to tackle this because it's such a big conversation um, and then we decided it was probably better just to have it as a conversation because at the end of it we'll probably keep coming back to this but what I'm really adamant about is that it's you don't treat um, anybody any differently than you would treat um, a man or a woman or whatever. So it's exactly the same as we would do with if a guy came in and wanted our help, if a woman came in and wanted our help, what do we do? We sit down and we have that discussion with them about what's their intention, what's the purpose, what do they want to get out of this? Um, and that's where that will lead you to. So I don't feel that there's actually rules and I'm happy for anyone to jump in and say, well, I think there is or, you know, um, have the conversation, but I don't think that that's actually separate rules for addressing anybody that belongs to the LGBTQIA community. Um, I think we treat them all as people. Um, so I think that's the most important thing that we need to get out there that everybody, they're people. Um, but having said that, um, there are challenges, obviously, that they have that other people may not have and so it comes down to uh, you might have to take them wig shopping you know you might have to as I've done uh, with a couple of my beautiful girls I've had them here at home and I've had to teach them how to walk in heels go in yep jump in, in. Uh, I'm assuming in this part of the conversation that you're talking mainly about transgender transgender sorry as opposed to lesbian and gay Clients. Yes, yes, correct. Transgender. So my yes, so my transgender, uh, I've got a couple of them and they're friends. And so they've come here and we've had a session on how to wear heels and how to walk in heels. Um, and, you know, that session also in, entailed them having a couple of glasses of wine so that they could relax um, <laughs> and get into it. And we had that session on how they walk in heels and what would be an appropriate heel height for them um, that they would be comfortable walking in because it's it's all just common sense girls it's it's common sense we're not going to go and stick them in a you know six inch stiletto you know but you could do something that's a block heel that's reasonably easy so I've had to do that with them uh wig shopping I've had to do um uh, one of my girls also uh, grew her own hair. So, and then that presented another whole lot of challenges because she didn't actually know how to do her hair. So just things sometimes that we take for granted that uh, we know how to brush our hair. They don't know how to do that. So what I did in that situation was I spoke to my hairdresser and we went to his uh, salon and he shut his salon. So it was just the two, uh, the two girls. And he did the whole session on how to wash their hair, how to brush their hair, how to get all the knots out at the back, um, uh, how to do a simple blow wave, uh, just things that we might take for granted that no, they had not been taught that. So it's a challenge uh, to them. So that was, um, we had a great afternoon. Uh, but I, that actually, I was telling Evelyn about this story the other day. What was interesting there was those girls are really good friends, um, but one's a bit pricklier than the other. So, of course, Pete's, um, my hairdresser, has 
shut the salon, done all of that. Um, and then we've got in and we've, I've introduced the girls, we've sat down, we've gone through what we're going to do for the next couple of hours. And then Pete said, now, would you, uh, would any of you guys like a cup of tea or coffee? Exactly, M. And that was one of the girls' reactions was, <laughs> and so Pete got the tea and coffee orders and off he went. Anyway, she was very prickly. Um, but I had to take charge of that. You know, so I had to smack her on the nose and say, stop it, stop it now, because you're getting your horns, put those horns back in. You've got your horns out and they don't need to be out because there is nothing, that's just the way we speak amongst, women speak to each other like that too. Do you, any of you guys want to drink? You know, it's not um, a sexual thing. It's none of those sort of things. So I took charge of that situation, gave her a bit of a smack on the nose um, she did pull her horns in. They absolutely loved it. And at the end, um, she, uh, she was the one that went up to Pete and said, do you mind if I give you a hug? Mm. This has been so fabulous for me. Um, and Pete was, you know, of course. So they had a hug and, and everything was really, really good. Um, so I think there's times that you do need to uh, take charge because that's, that was a situation that was, there was no malice intended. I've also been in another situation with um, another one of my transgender uh, clients, not one of those two girls, um, where we were in a shop and trying things on and the shop assistant ripped the curtain open um, to just so, that, obviously, so that they could see you know, what was going on. Um, it, it was horrible. It was so horrible. My poor client, anyway, so I raced over and shut the curtain. And I won't, I'm, not, I'm trying not to use any names here. <laughs> no names, no pack drill. Um, and I said, right, put your clothes back on. Take off those things, put your clothes back on. We're leaving. And uh, she said, Oh, but you know, what about, I said, no, 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 you do not get treated like that. You do not deserve to be treated like that. And we will never buy, I will never bring anyone to this store again. Nothing to do with uh, whether someone's transgender or not. I will never set foot in this store again because that was so disrespectful. But again, you would do the same thing if it was a woman or a male. Yeah. So that's the big thing that I want to get across is that people will possibly try and push barriers and your client might be a bit more sensitive but it's up to you to sort of take charge of that situation and uh, protect them and um, respect them give them the respect that they deserve and take them on that journey that's true that Suzanne that is so true it's about ultimate respect otherwise you shouldn't be working with them um, no I, my first foray into looking after somebody that was actually a transgender, um, her name was Rosemary, and um, when I uh, and, and we had these great conversations on the phone prior to the session. She mm -hmm. wanted to know how it was going to, you know, um, you know, transpire. What was going to happen? Where did she, you know, how would in other words, what she was really checking was how was she going to be looked after? Mm. We had built such great rapport over the phone. Uh, she was really comfortable and we made the appointment. She turned up. I was expecting her um, and it was when I was living in this place in North Sydney and she turned up and I must admit it, it was my, yeah, it was my first experience and I didn't, I, I had imagined in my mind who and what Rosemary would look like, you know, the voice and things like that. And what met me at the door was the complete opposite. Rosemary towered over the top of me. Uh, this, and, and I must admit, I opened the door to say hello and I went, whoa, <laughs> it was a reaction. <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm the master of, uh, fixing a, a reaction really quickly. I said, wow, so great to see you. 
<laughs> invited her in, but there was a whole heap of things that we really needed to help her with. Uh, namely, it was the overly long hair. It was the wig. And I think some of, some of these um, wonderful people, they, they want to be so much uh, to get to their, their destination of being who they want to be in the future that they, they overdo it. They go overboard. So there was the, the long hair that not even a woman that was caring for her hair would even wear it like that. It was just hair and it was long. And I noticed the hair flicks, you know, just playing with the hair and wanting, you know, everyone to see the nails. And it was the overly exaggerated feminine trays, you know, it was really quite interesting. And we, we addressed that really early in the piece. I'm just saying, look, I'm, I ask permission, and this is one of the things that is really important to do, is to ask permission, may I, address some of your mannerisms and and she was so open to everything and we got her to practice first of all certainly leave the hair alone and um, she found that hard initially but as soon as I looked at her mannerism she she went oh yes that's right and but and also the head flicks um, that was another thing it was like look at me I've got hair now and um, and the nails were too long it was like everything was exaggerated. So it was really a wonderful experience for me because I was learning on the job as well. It was really interesting. I noticed when she walked in, she was walking difficultly, in a difficult way. She wasn't managing the shoes and it was the heel height, simply because the heels were, first of all, one, too thin, they were stilettos. Um, and secondly, they were too high. And so, um, the first thing I wanted to do was to not even worry about the wardrobe. I just wanted to get her to understand that we are going to go shopping. She did. She wore the best that she had, and um, that was not the best. It just didn't work for her. And so I said, "We're going shopping now." Let me tell you, I, I had to frame up the shopping experience because we had to go into women's stores, right, to get. Um, some of the things that she wanted to do and she wanted to do ultra feminine well that was not going to quite work we were going to do the accessories in ultra feminine but we were going to actually get the good basics that were going to actually fit her large frame she had very broad shoulders very tall Emma uh, th th that um, when you just mentioned that 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 in my experience is one of the key challenges so um, I used to work a lot with the transgender groups at Dress for Success and it was it, they were my my favorite groups we had you know I really enjoyed working with the transgender clients but that was so I found there's three things I found working with the, those transgender clients one was the frames the fit you know we we've and we're clearly talking about mainly men trans trans to women Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, issues with even though they might be taking hormones and body shape is, is gradually changing, we've still got issues around um, shoulder breadth, um, broad back, um, long arms, and, and lar generally larger, not, not fatter, but just bigger boned proportions. Mm -hmm. So that I find was, is one of the challenges in terms of fit. So finding something and, and explaining to those clients that you know, when they, they're starting to get demoralized or disheartened when things aren't fitting properly, explaining that we have the same challenges with our gender binary clients you know, they, we, women, we take women shopping and, the, you know, we have fit issues. So don't get disheartened. We will work around that. So we'll fit to the biggest um, area like we do with other clients and then we'll alter to the rest. And I found once we kind of went through that and they, they kind of um, understood that it wasn't just, you know, them being a freak or being, you know, kind of outside the norm. It was we have, we have fit issues with a lot of clients. We can solve this. And the other thing I found definitely was the hair and makeup issue. So the over exaggerated hair and makeup. And one of the questions I was asked the most was, what do I do 
uh, and that was something Alona was just talking about. What do I do with my eyebrows? You know, how do I style them? How do I shape them? What do I actually need to do to create a more feminine looking visage, but without being cartoonish or caricaturish? Yeah. yeah. The, um, right. One of the things we really have to be aware of, look, and I'm assuming that we've built the rapport with them, they trust us. Now you've got to protect them. Because there are, look, even though there are no surprises these days, you know, there are so many diverse groups and they, they, everybody lived their life the way they want to, but there are still some people that are hugely judgmental. And, um, you know, when I, I took Rosemary for shopping and I knew it would happen, that's why I framed up when I knew the shops I was going to take her to and one was for basics it was actually Maggie T and because the you know the the structure and the and the, mm -hmm. and the sizes were great and this we're going back quite a few years um, there were other good really great stores as well but Maggie T was great for the uh, relaxed um, basics and I must admit I rang each of the stores and I said I'm going to be bringing in somebody very special um, a wonderful lady by the name of Rosemary uh, she is a transgender and uh, we are going to be looking for things that are at your larger sizes. Are you able to accommodate us? I really wanted to warn them up front so there were no surprises. And there were a couple of stores that the day before I went in personally and I spoke to them and I said, if you make my client uncomfortable, there will be consequences. I won't be happy. And they were absolutely amazing, except for one store. There was a girl on this particular day and she hadn't been there the day before and I hadn't had a chance to speak to her and obviously nobody else had. And there was this, all of a sudden, this, I can't tell you there was attitude. And I was really unhappy. And I, I said to her, listen, you're going to pull your head in. Or I, I said words to that effect. I said, you're going to stop this. Otherwise, I'll, I want somebody else to serve us. Thank you. But it, was the, it wasn't just even the looks or the... It was actually the looking up and down, trying to take in this person. I'm sure she didn't even understand her reaction that was happening. But she was totally into, look, who is this? And, you know, there was, there was attitude. So you really, there is protection. You've got to really save them from that. If there's a chance that you can take them to a store where that store is willing to shut their doors and to actually accommodate this client, just even if it's just after hours, would be even better. Uh, that would be wonderful. I've got, I have a couple of stores that were very private stores and they were actually able to do that. Um, but shoe sizes, um, the Unless you get shoes made, and at the time I only had one shoe store that I knew that would make shoes, but he, he only made men's shoes, <laughs> that didn't work. Um, so um, Shepherds has always been around and it was a case of getting size 42s and trying to make them look you know, beautiful and feminine, really. Challenges, we, do, we are challenged, probably more than we would be normally but we're up for it. We've, we are the trusted advisors. We've got to do the very best for these people. Going the other way, Emma, you are mentioning, um, yes, uh, um, male to female, I oh, know, sorry, female to male. Uh, I haven't worked that way, but I would imagine that that wouldn't, that probably wouldn't give you the, the challenges with sizing um, then maybe the other way. I could be wrong. Any ideas? Evelyn, Evelyn I have. And um, you're right, the sizing is a lot easier. Um, but the, the couple of people that I've spoken to were um, interested because they, they were doing hormone treatment. Um, they, they were sort of um, uh, unfamiliar with this weight that suddenly appeared around their bellies and their hips and their thighs so instead of being straight up and down as they were just accommodating the new curves was was the challenge there and making them feel comfortable with those curves yes it would be more the curves than the actual size size right yeah yeah right. Mm. 
the other thing also, just while we mention hormones, so one of the other um, interesting things that I think you wouldn't kind of, you wouldn't think of until it was raised is, is one of the um, transgender clients that I worked with through Dress for Success um, pulled me aside one day and she said, look, I, I, you know, this is a bit of a weird thing to ask, but I've got this issue. And I said, oh, okay, what's, what's going on? And she said, the hormones that I'm taking are just making me really hot and I, I perspire a lot so that I do my makeup and it looks all beautiful in the morning. And, you know, by the time I get anywhere, I'm perspiring and I look awful and I feel hot. So I'm really limited with what I can wear. The same issue we have with our menopausal and perimenopausal clients. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's something that you perhaps wouldn't think of unless you'd been in that situation so I had to be really sensitive also to makeup that was going to sit and set properly and not be you know running down her face and clothing in natural fibers and breathable fabrics and things that were going to actually work for her because she just had you know she said I just feel like if I've got something on that's and I'm, I'm feeling like that I just feel like ripping it off so she had to be feeling comfortable as well because of hormones so i suppose makeup that in other words stay on lipstick um per, like semi-permanent mascara would be really useful just because you know them as they are doesn't mean that you should go in with a closed mind so let me get to the story so i two of my um my lesbian clients and they were getting married and they asked me to um help them with their wedding outfits um, so uh, neither of them are dress or skirt girls. Uh, so it would have been easy for me to assume that that was the way that we were going. Anyway, I sat down and went through the, you know, what's your intention and what, is there something precious that you need to have with you or can we incorporate something precious into your outfit? Uh, one of the girls had a scarf that was her grandfather's. And it was really precious. And she said, oh, I would love to have this incorporated into something that was made for me. And this would be part of the gun. Oh, well, fantastic. Okay, great. Um, what are you thinking? So I didn't assume that she was not going to be wearing a dress. Anyway, she said, um, I want to wear a dress. And I went, oh, okay, okay, that's all right. That's, that's excellent. What sort of dress? Well, it was the Grace Kelly dress. And her partner was like, you don't even own a dress. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's okay. It doesn't matter if she doesn't own a dress. She's going to own this one dress and she's going to look amazing. So we did this uh, down and then we put all the lining in the front was this scarf that was her uh, grandfather's. And so it was close to her heart. So I said, we'll put it in the lining in the top so it's close to your heart. So your grandfather will be there with you. So that was lovely. And then her partner, I said, okay, now what's your special thing? And she had, um, at the time, she was a uh, judge and she had a special pen that she signed. It was a fountain pen that belonged, that had been in her family for years. And she signed all her big judgments with it and everything else. And she said, I would really love to sign, I've got to sign my wedding certificate with this pen. And I'm like, fantastic. So then the outfit that we uh, designed for her, um, we had the pen not hidden on the inside so much, but on the outside so that she could see it and it was there. But again, it was over her heart. So that was close to her. Um, but my whole point in telling that story was that uh, you would never, ever have thought that one of those girls would have picked a dress. But she did. She looked amazing. She absolutely loved it. And that's now started her journey where she's possibly got maybe four or five dresses in her um, wardrobe and she loves to wear them. It hasn't done a whole change where she's become that really girly girl, but it's just um, opened up a door for her. So, And it's so rewarding doing things like this. It makes my heart sing. Now, Donna, I'm interested. Have you worked with... Transgenders or any anybody? Yep. 
Yep, I've worked with transgender, um, as I said, um, trans men, as well as trans women. Right. Um, and as you said, interestingly, they are more common than the trans men. But why wouldn't they want to be women? It's so much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And once true. you are trusted within the community, they will be very loyal to you as well. They will, they will tell others. And some of the girls, they're so well-dressed, and yet I've realised that they, they were not the ones that dressed them. It was their partner. Mm-hmm. Their partner was the one that would, with all the style and, of course, helped them in that way. Getting back to Rosemary, uh, she was very involved in their community and she said she had had such a great experience and really appreciated everything. We, we, again, back to what you were saying, Suzanne, had to teach her how to walk and how to even enter a room. And the mannerisms, even around uh, etiquette, dining, everything. And, you know, I didn't realise there were little nuances that women just do that men don't. She said, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of people that would really want to use your services. Many of them turn up looking dreadful. They're in this transition stage and they're messing up totally. They, they, they're they either overdoing it or not, not doing it properly. And she said, look, it would be really great. Unfortunately for me at that time, uh, she actually was transferred and transferred to Melbourne. And she had a high profile position as well. She told me her story about how she had to tell her uh, boss and the people she reported to, she had to explain that she was not going to be the guy in the office anymore. She was going to be a female. And it was really pleasing to hear that they were fully supportive of her, which was great. A lot of companies may not be. I've heard some stories where they just couldn't, couldn't cope with that whereas uh, she was fully supported and transferred to Melbourne to a better job, better position within the company. That was great. So I lost that opportunity. This was like a transition for me too, like a learning experience for me because my sister and I had the the best recycled shop in Double Bay. And uh, every year, of course, we have our gay Mardi Gras. And I started noticing Debbie was on on a she was not aware but I there was um, an awareness that I didn't even know I had and I saw this uh, guy gentleman come into the store and he was looking through the dresses and I was just about to say is this for your wife (laughs) almost almost and I stopped myself I just had this feeling I don't know where it came from but um, I said is this is this for somebody you know, a partner of yours or is this for yourself and he said oh it's for me and I can't tell you how grateful I was to the universe for having channeled something to me in that moment mm. and that's when I noticed the very long fingernails that were unpainted and uh but it would it was a fully a male a male the way he walked talked you know everything And he was just looking through the racks and he picked out a bright red sequined evening dress. And um, I knew it wouldn't go anywhere near him at all. It wouldn't go, but he wanted it. And he said, I'd like to try that on. I said, you know what? I would really like to close the store for you. Is there a more convenient time for you to come back so, so I can just close the store? Because the the dressing rooms actually opened out, but then they were in full view of the store. And I just had that feeling that he'd want some privacy. He said, well, look, I really want to try it on now because I want to bring my partner back tonight. He said, would that be okay? I said, that's absolutely fine. So I did make sure that I actually put a sign on the door. Uh, Private session um, will be open in half an hour. And people were walking past and they'd stop and then they'd go away. So I I knew I wasn't going to lose any clients anyway. But he tried on that dress. It didn't fit anywhere. I knew it wouldn't. However, I did say, look, how could this be altered in such a way? I'm not sure that it can be. Are you sure that you're really taken with this? Or should you think about getting something made in this sort of fabric? He said, no, I love this dress. I've got to have this dress. So he came back later that night 
I have never seen a transition like it. From the guy that I saw earlier that day to that evening, he'd, he'd had his long hair. It was sort of longish in you know, a pony, but it was cut. Unfortunately, he had had it dyed too black and he'd had it permed. I didn't even recognize them when they came in. I uh, knew the time they were coming in, but he'd had it permed. I thought, oh my God, I wish I had had a chance to speak to him about this. His long fingernails had been painted. He had fully trend, he'd just done his transition. This was it, this was the big moment. He wanted to try this dress on and he was trying it on as a woman. He tried the dress on and this was fascinating for me. His partner, fully a guy, um, he was giving advice. She bought in the, the red shoes, stilettos, high as, and couldn't walk in them. But I said, um, how are we going to look at this dress? What's going to happen? This guy must have been a tailor or something. He absolutely said, we're going to take the back out of it. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And they bought the dress. It was an expensive dress. It was one of the, you know, high because we only ever held high-end clothes. I can't remember the label. But they took that dress away and he wore it at the gay Mardi Gras. But it was totally transformed for him. How amazing. How amazing that his partner was actually able to see the potential in that dress. I actually love working with these people. And I haven't worked with many. Really, I haven't. And I, it, it's, it's, I, I find it not only a challenge, but an exciting challenge. Rewarding. Mm, it's fun. It's really fun. Yeah. But One that, thing we haven't discussed yet is working with non-binary people. That's interesting in another way, whether some days they might want to be very feminine and other days they're very blokey and then other days quite androgynous. So that's interesting Yeah. To see that transformation. Um, I'm thinking of one person in particular who, who used to dress um, in all manner of things, um, but the person always had a very masculine way of moving. They could look more, and it is a they, they could look more feminine than me and would go for way more frills and was much better at their makeup. But that the way that they moved was very masculine, which was interesting. But, you know, if, if, if the person had been a trans woman, I would have been tempted to talk to them about the way that they moved. But because they specifically identified as non-binary, mm. mm. that's just who they are. Yep, exactly. So interesting. That is so interesting. Mm. My uh, window dresser was gay. But he loved to dress in women's clothing occasionally. You know, they would all get together and they would be dressed up. Uh, the one thing I did notice was they loved quality and they seemed to dress in back in uh, decades fashion, like in, back in the 40s or the 50s. They really loved that. Um, the one thing, though, with a, an ageing gay, they can end up looking like old women you know, um, and they've got to be really careful about, you know, if they're going to dress as a woman, a guy can be very attractive as an ageing man, but when they dress to a as a woman, they can look like a dowdy older woman. Hmm. Yeah, the other thing I thought I did, did want to just mention, and not so much for the people that are on the call, but more for people that might be listening to the recording, is that it's not compulsory if somebody rings you and this is not your cup of tea, it is, you, you, there's nothing wrong with saying, I have no expertise in this area. I'd like to refer you to Donna or Emma or Evelyn or refer them on to somebody else that's got a lot of more experience in this area than me. There's nothing wrong with doing that. What is wrong, that another one of my um, trans clients had happened to her was that um, she'd made an appointment with um, another image consultant and it came to a couple of days before and she rang um, the image consultant and said, you know, I'm just confirming that we're right for Saturday and, um, you know, and it was very upfront. 
by the fact that um, she was transgender and, and just want to confirm that everything's good. Yes, everything's great. See you then. Um, and then on the morning of the appointment, rang my client and said, I'm really sorry, but I have to cancel because my husband will not have people like you in this house. Oh, that's so sad. It absolutely <laughs> broke my heart, broke my heart. And so they came, she found me and came and then she was very nervous. Oh, I so get upset. She was very nervous when she came and I said, now sit down, let's have a cup of tea. I want you to tell me why you're so nervous. And she told me the story. Well, of course I started crying. And I said, well, now we have to start this with a hug because that it, it's just, you, you wouldn't do it. And that's why I keep saying it's, it's, you treat them like you would treat any other person that they are no different. No um, different. Suzanne, you make a really good point about referring people on if you're not comfortable working mm -hmm. with them, because as, as most of you are probably aware, um, in the gay or, or trans non-binary community, the rates of mental health are very high. And it's because they've felt not themselves or that they're not being in the right body very often for a very long time. And um, they, it might've taken a lot for them to come out of the closet, so to speak. Yeah. So it, they really do need that safe space, as you were saying, Suzanne, to, to be able to work in. I had a, a trans woman, re it, it was a, um, a um, in-law of my dad's who lives in, in California in the US, um, reach out to me to see if I could help them. And I, I let them know what I could offer, just, you know, at a distance here, me being here in Australia. Um, and, and then I sought out somebody local so that they, that I, you know, I sounded them out, the, the consultant out and made sure they would be happy to work with a, a trans woman. And because uh, I think it's really important to have someone you know, that, that she could go shopping with, and, you know, like having that support uh, by her side, just making her feel a bit braver about trying things on. Even though I could recommend things from here, I couldn't actually be there on the ground for them. And, and I was just going to jump in there and say, and that's something I've found too, is that they love to go shopping with you, even if they're not necessarily buying a lot of stuff. To me, a lot of I've found with my girls, a lot of it is just, they just want to sit down and have a cup of coffee in a coffee shop with you. You know, they just, you know, so that becomes part of it probably more so than that would be with a um, female client or a male client, much more so, you know, it's that whole experience to them. Sorry, Emma, I jumped Emma. in. No, that's okay. Um, I, do, I think that raises an interesting point as well in that there are a lot of opportunities that might not at first be obvious with, um, and I'm talking about transgender in particular clients, um, not necess necessarily um, lesbian and gay or bi, um, is the image coaching services. So with there's really kind of two angles of that. So there's the, the, the style, the stylist, so, so personal stylist services and, and doing the shopping, hair and makeup and all of that. But then there's also a whole lot of opportunities for us if we, if we you know, like doing that kind of thing and we're equipped to do that kind of thing, like Donna just said, to act as an image coach, to, to be helping with the, um, you know, etiquette, um, integration, how do you behave, how do you act in different situations, how do you handle things, how do you handle the, the bigotry or the people that do make you feel uncomfortable, how do you do that with grace, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, that are, are the kind of, I guess, the, the building blocks of, of becoming female from male and learning those little subtleties that go so much beyond just shopping and, and hair and makeup and, and kind of personal style. So a, a whole lot of opportunities. Ilona. Um, first, uh, I have never had such a client, but uh, in Thailand, I uh, traveled a lot. I lived in Bangkok, so I had that experience. Uh, first, <clears throat> these uh, women, uh, they have a certain image in their head how they imagine women. And we have to find that point, what they want for themselves and whether it fits 
what we see. And then we can help. That's the first thing. They want to be women, but they have certain things. I want this nails. I want the hair. And they, they have that mannerism. I want hair doing the able to do this. So that's that's the uh, major basic major thing what yeah, we have to find out. Exaggerate the movements because this is all of a sudden they've got these things. They've got the hair and the nails and the and the, and they want the mannerisms that they see we women do, but we we're not aware of them because they're, they're so natural to us. Whereas when they're trying to do it, it's it's often overly done uh, but the, I, I have found that they are so appreciative you know mm -hmm. all the little things that we take for granted even though how to go you know walk into a store and just be confident their confidence level will help them you know if they if they're very confident walking into a store as if they've got every right to be there like anyone else and they can search through and they're just you know, if somebody approaches them, just say, yeah, I'm looking for something like this. Have you got anything that is going to work? And and to be confident because then people are less likely to be judgmental. Oh, okay. And, th and then they're on side. You know, they, they're there then to help. But um, the appreciation for the little things, you know, who would be the best nail artist or who would be really great to get your eyebrows done with? And, and the little advice about, um, even the shape of eyebrows and the lipstick shape, I, it's almost like, you know, they want to cry because they've finally got a buddy that they can trust and sit with and have a girly talk with. You know, I think that is all part of it. You know, and so Ilona, I just saw your um, comment earlier um, in regards to underwear, bra and, and underwear. That is another whole challenge too, to try and contain a transforming shape or perhaps still a masculine shape um, but in female underwear so that then we're building that foundation that structure over which a dress might sit yes exactly exactly uh, many of them they want the hooker type of woman because that's attractive for them the overdone and big blonde and and uh, that that type of woman. So hard to tell them uh, that there are other type of women. So if they to want them, that sort, to give them the context of dressing. Yeah. So if they if they want to go overboard, then there's the context for that. It's you know with their own parties or you know dress ups, whatever they're doing. But if they want to be also taken seriously, then being able to tone it down, the same as we do as women, we dress up, we dress down, we dress for occasions, things like that. So they need to be able to differentiate the different you know areas of their life, and you know they don't want to be laughed at, they don't want to be ridiculed. So how do they? manage their flamboyance well it's going to be occasions when they will be able to do that uh, Niku I think you had a question as well how do you handle the male client transfer to the um, female and for bra fitting or how how do you manage the bra because on the way you're just saying all right so we have to to stay on the I think on the way is just easy but bra it's it's a little bit of a challenge well how do you handle that there are some really good bra makers. You're talking about bras, you know, underwear. Yeah, yeah. No, no, bras, yeah. There's a wonderful woman, a secret women's business, and she's hilarious. And uh, she's at Willoughby. Yes, at, at um, Crow's Nest. Yes, yes. Yes, I know who you mean. Um, to big, big personality, big bright red hair and very curvy and very... Yes, she would be a great option if you if you were in Sydney and you had um, trans clients. She has a store, but she stocks a whole range um, of sizes, and she's very she's very size diverse. And um, she, I I don't know for certain, but I would suspect that she has very strong um, links into the lesbian and gay and trans mm -hmm. community. 
if um, they are not, uh, they don't know are they a male or female, but they want to dress up sometimes as a, like a female, and they did not do the surgery as a to have that implant on, how do you handle that to have that bra? They want to wear the, uh, for example, dress. And what's that situation? Well, think of all the flat-chested women around the place. Uh, there are many, many padded bras <laughs> available, so it would just it would just be a matter of doing the same thing, really. Uh, it's just that they, they would only have a very small bust because you can't, unless they're going to stuff their bra full of something bigger, but that can start looking a little bit fake, particularly if the things start shifting around. <laughs> The other option for that also might be um, going to a lingerie specialist who specialises in post-op uh, mastectomy um, yep. clients. So they, they, they've got issue, they've got um, solutions rather to um, fit breast issues where there's, there's no breast or there's a partial reconstruction or there's, there's something missing. So that could be a good option if you have those sorts of clients. Thank you. A while back, I was I was reaching out to this community more. Um, I'd certainly like to do more work with them, but I haven't. My marketing's not around around them in particular. I'm just wondering um, how do they find us? Um, because I haven't done any work with them now for quite a long time, and although I haven't marketed directly to them, I would have thought that because our services do still fit with things that they would need to know as well. Maybe they've got partners or maybe they've just found uh, stores that actually work for them, I don't know. But I would have thought that they would have needed our services. So anyway. one, one potential option for that, I, I, I think, I haven't done this, but I think would probably be a good idea, is um, building a collaboration or aligning yourself with gender reassignment surgeons or um, consultants or um, counsellors who are working in that space so that if you can if you can build a relationship with those types of people you can establish yourself as a trusted advisor and a trusted go-to source and there's a there's a great referral opportunity mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. and often too to write maybe some articles in their in their particular newspaper you know share some really interesting articles with them yeah I've found at least three different options on Etsy for transgender underwear so oh. people, people that are actually making specifically transgender underwear I'm oh, very good so male to female is is a challenge it is yeah I would find it much easier helping a woman who wants to you know do a man's life I'd, I'd find that much easier to help her yeah. Um, the other way yeah yeah we do have so much more variety in the clothes that we can wear don't we I mean, we, <laughs> we can easily just put on jeans and t-shirt but I do remember um, a client saying that they were getting used to lo well losing the curves by gaining a tummy because <laughs> that's where most men carry their weight so that was something that this particular person was getting used to oh right mm -hmm. It's, it just basically goes back to exactly how you would treat any other client. It's all about respect. It's about mm -hmm. sitting down and nutting down, which is what Alona was saying too, nutting down exactly what the outcome is. And it might even help by getting them to bring images of um, the sort of woman that this is their ideal woman, you mm -hmm. know, and then talking them through that because if they want to go into the corporate world, is that the way you, the right look for them or is it better do we need to tone it down just having the conversation but it's no different from the conversation you would have with anyone else exactly that's a big thing I don't think we need to be worried about we need specific rules or anything like that I think it's it just comes down to respect respect is it and and also to asking permission there are there, there could be um, some tricky things that you need to share with them because they're either exaggerating things or uh, to oh. ask permission and also to and be honest. Said, yep, and, and, honest. and they did have a transgender person in the changing room and they were dressing them um, and they were being respectful. They had a joke amongst themselves that had nothing to do with the woman in the changing room, but that wasn't her perception of it. 
Oh. It was in there. She'd come out and something, it didn't look good. She'd gone back in. They were having a joke about something completely unrelated. But all that woman heard was them laughing. Oh. So her perception of the situation was that they were laughing at her. And she got really upset and she left. Um, so it became um, difficult then to turn that situation around. So I think we might need to be just a little bit more mindful that they might be more sensitive yeah. to something like that than, than we would be. There's the, there's the insecurity. There's a level of insecurity <laughs> that we have to manage the... We just need to be a little bit more sensitive towards that. So if there's something... And if, if somebody does say something that's funny, it's bring them straight in on the joke. That's right. But there's not that perception that it was it, it had anything to do with them. That's a really good tip. Yeah, yeah. very good. That would be all. So, yeah. Any last-minute thoughts? Anybody? Emma? No, that's it. We're going to wrap this up. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Thank you, everybody, for being on the call. It's been fantastic. I think it's been a bit of an eye-opener, some of those little tips that we may not have thought about. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording um, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Perfect. Perfect.